Hello and welcome. In this video, we will learn about the different size functions available in the generate the surface mesh task of the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Photodite Geometry Workflow. To fully understand these options, we will generate several surface meshes and compare them with each other. Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. Let's launch Fluent in Meshing mode. Make sure to select the Double Precision option. Using the drop-down menu in the Workflow tab, select the Watertight Geometry Workflow. In the Import Geometry task, keep the options to default and load the provided CAD file. The model we have here is that of a printed circuit board placed inside an enclosure which acts as the fluid region. Two cylindrical capacitors as well as heat sinks are embedded on the PCB. We will not be adding any local sizing in this demo. So execute the task and continue to the next task that is generate the surface mesh. We will primarily focus on the size functions input in this task. For this input, there are three options, curvature, proximity and curvature and proximity. For brevity, we will directly discuss the curvature and proximity option since it is a combination of the other two options. In addition to the minimum size, maximum size and growth rate inputs, when the curvature and proximity size function option is selected, there are three more inputs that are required from the user. That is the curvature normal angle, cells per gap and scope proximity to. The curvature normal angle is associated with the curvature size function and the other two inputs are associated with the proximity size function. The curvature size function is generally used for refining the surface mesh to efficiently capture surface curvature. Much like the curvature option in the local sizing task, this option uses the minimum and maximum size growth rate inputs in addition to the curvature normal angle. The curvature normal angle dictates the maximum allowable angle that one element edge may span. For example, a value of 10 implies that a division will be made when the angle change along the curve is 10 degree and therefore a 180 degree arc will be divided into approximately 18 segments. A smaller normal angle generates a more refined surface mesh. This may be necessary to capture the curvature accurately, for example, around the leading edge of an aerofoil wing in external aerodynamic analysis. Caution needs to be taken as this is a global size function and will refine the curvature everywhere in the geometry, leading to an increased computational effort. If a localized capture of a curvature is desired, it may be useful to apply the curvature local sizing to those selected geometrical entities. The cells per gap and scope proximity to inputs are required to implement the proximity size function. This function ensures the presence of an appropriate number of cells in gaps as prescribed by the user through the cells per gap input. Note that this input can be a real number. This has the effect of increasing the size of face elements located further away from edges and stretching face elements with large sizes along side faces or gaps, thereby reducing the overall face count and ultimately the cell count. A gap for the purpose of defining proximity is defined in two ways. The area between two opposing boundary edges of a face and the internal volume or region between two faces. We can use the additional options under the scope proximity to, to set scope to edges, faces or both faces and edges. Choose the appropriate option as needed. Once satisfied with all the inputs, simply click the generate the surface mesh button to create the surface mesh for the model. Let's now look at three different meshes 
that were generated using different inputs. The settings used for each mesh are overlaid on top of the respective images. The min, max sizes and the growth rate for all the meshes are the same to facilitate a one-to-one -one comparison. The difference between the meshes in the top row is the value of the curvature normal angle. For the mesh on the top left, a value of 18, which is a default, was used and for the mesh on the top right, a value of 10 was used. Notice the increased number of cells along the circumference of the capacitors for the mesh on the top right. This is the impact of using a lower curvature normal angle. The inputs for the mesh on the bottom are the same as the mesh on the top left except the cells per gap input. For the mesh on the top left, this value is set to 1 which is the default and for the mesh on the bottom, this value is set to 2. It is clear how increasing the cells per gap value increases the number of cells that are filled in gaps between geometrical features. Note that the scope proximity to was set to edges for both the meshes. To understand how this option influences the mesh distribution, let's compare three more meshes. Here all the settings are identical among the three meshes except the scope proximity to option. It is set to edges for the mesh on the top left and considers only the edge to edge proximity and generates as many cells as prescribed only between two edges. When scope proximity to is set to faces, as done for the mesh on the top right, only a face to face proximity is considered and the appropriate number of cells are generated wherever such face to face gaps are encountered. This setting results in a higher number of cells when compared to just the edges input. When the scope proximity to is set to edges and faces, like for the mesh on the bottom, both edge to edge and face to face gaps are considered. Let's summarize what we learned. Using the size functions setting in the generate the surface mesh task, it is possible to define how the meshing algorithm refines the curvature in the geometry and the gap between edges or faces or both. Depending on the need, the user can enforce just the curvature or proximity size functions individually or both the functions combined through the curvature and proximity option. With that, let's wrap up this lesson.